Hi there, I'm Sandy Alnock, artist and paper crafter here on YouTube, and I'm going to share a lovely day at Machu Picchu. And yes, I did spell those intentionally the way I did. Machu Picchu is spelled correctly, and lovely in this stamp set has two L's because it's got a llama. I started looking around for pictures of llamas, found a screaming llama. I always look around on Google for just various pictures to get either the idea of what an animal's markings might be or scenery behind it. And when I was looking for llamas, I found lots of great Machu Picchu images. So I decided I was going to draw Machu Picchu behind this little llama. He's stamped in a gray ink and you can use a lot of different types of inks. There's This one is from Lawn Fawn, so you can check out um, Supplies are all listed in the doobly-doo below. I will have all that listed out for you as well as over on the blog. And I stamped it in gray so that I could really make this look like I actually drew the whole llama because he's a realistic looking llama. That's a great time to try for a no line coloring type of look. And you can just follow along with the stamp to create your shading, but not have any of your lines look like they were stamped. The pencils that I'm using are the Albrecht Dorr watercolor pencils, but I'm using them as regular pencils on some Nina cardstock. Just because you're using a watercolor pencil doesn't mean you always have to use water with it. I happen to have these, this set out and I was using it for something else and I thought, you know, let me just try this and see. And they work just like regular pencils, so why not, right? The picture that I chose had a llama with some striking markings because that's what I was looking for. I didn't want to have just a plain old white llama. And um, I, I just chose one with some really interesting contrasting markings. So he had uh, some strong color in his ears, some strong color, strong brown on his body. And he had just a really good combination of browns and blacks. And since my Albrecht Durer set has some really great browns and blacks, that was one of the reasons why this was the perfect project to choose to use these pencils for. I do have the Prismacolors, which are the ones that I normally use for my color pencil work, but I have two cases for them because they didn't all fit in the one case that I had. And right now I've misplaced my case that has all the browns and the blacks in it. Well, actually I have one black in my regular case with all my colors. So it's like, well, you know, I know where all these are. So I'm going to go ahead and use these pencils. I decided to give him some blue eyes, even though I have no idea if llamas really have blue eyes. I couldn't tell by the picture that I was using. But I'm going to give him some dark shading right underneath of that mane of hair. So any animal that has a clump of hair, like a horse or anything, you put some shadows right underneath of it and look how much it pops right away. Giving it a few lines of kind of furry texture that I'm not worried about blending because it's going to give it a, a look of some nice long hair. And then just slowly work on building up some colors in the shading on the face. I'm using my pencil sharpener, which many of you continue to email me about how much you're happy with your quiet sharp pencil sharpener. Um, a lot of people have wondered if I still like it because I recommended it for so long. Yes, I still like it, still use it a lot. It when I started looking for a pencil sharpener, because I like a really good sharp point and I like a sharpener that does not eat the pencil, so it has to have auto stop because once it's sharp, there's no reason for it to keep spinning. And this one does stop so that, you know, eat up the rest of your pencil. But I bought this one uh, along with a whole bunch of others that I kept buying and returning because none of them worked, even though some of them said they had auto stop. But this one has been just a workhorse for me. It's a school pencil sharpener, which means it's industrial because kids can't break it. And it also has a whole bunch of different sizes of openings that you can put different kinds of pencils in. So it's helpful if you use a lot of different brands because some of the brands will be a little bit wider in the pencil lead than others. But here I've got um, the darker brown body that I'm building up for him because he had a, a nice dark rich color with that nice white mane or white chin neck area underneath of him. And that's what I was really looking for in creating this little guy because I liked the contrast in the, the colors that that there was, a, you know, there were dark darks and light lights, and you could tell there were some really specific looks that this little guy had. Now you could leave a stamped image like this that you spent all this time on. You could leave it just on the card like this, and it would be wonderfully sent out that way to one of your friends or family. 
but I wanted to draw Machu Picchu. The longer I was drawing this llama, I was thinking that I liked the Machu Picchu scenes. So I was trying to figure out how I was going to do that. Fortunately, I left myself some room when I stamped my Have a Lovely Day so that I have some space to draw a scene in the background. And the whole time I was trying to picture, you know, how much of the scene was I going to put in here? Did I want to have some sky up in the top or not? Because I have the blue in his eyes and I decided I was going to put the blue in the sentiment. So I'm just going over top of the words, just the top half of them with the same blue pencil. So I could bring a little bit more of the blue color into this because I wasn't sure how much was going to end up in the scene itself. And then a little bit of the more yellowy brown color as I finished off the bottom of the letters. I will list over on the blog the actual colors that I used because I don't know them offhand, but I do have a list on a sticky note somewhere. So if I find that list, I will post it on the blog <laughs> along with everything else if you're looking for which colors that I used. But in general, just use some some happy colors. Use some, some brown colors that are darker and richer, some that have more of a yellow or orangey flavor to them, and you'll get a really nice mix of colors that you can do a lot of different animals with. The Machu Picchu scene then had a bunch of mountains in it, and these mountains have really strong striations on them, you know, vertical sort of crags in the rocks. And I, st whenever you start drawing something like this, just look for the shapes, look for the major shapes. So I'm trying to pencil in like the triangles of the mountains and some of the major sections of shadow. So there's like big triangles in certain areas, that kind of thing. Look for those spots first and get them put in. And if you want to help yourself, I'm trying to give myself some direction for how those rock formations are. They kind of are vertical in some areas. They hang a little bit toward the left or right in other areas. I'm just trying to pencil in some of those. And then I decided to go down and add in some grasses because there's at Machu Picchu, there's these whole hillsides and then there's these sort of rocky steps. I want to go see this someday. That would be really fun to go see Machu Picchu. But there's beautiful hillsides of green with then the rocks behind them. So I decided before I forget to put the rocks, or forget to put the grass in there, I would throw in the green to reserve that space because I could see myself getting carried away with the rocks and forgetting to move on. Decided to put a big rock in the center of the grasses just to give it a little character in there, not have a big old blank area of just green grass. And I'm gonna come back and do more work on the grass. I'm not gonna worry too much about making my my green all super smooth, but just get a bunch of color in there and then start working on those, those steps, I guess they are. So it's a mad climbing adventure. I think I'd have to get seriously in shape before I could actually climb to the top of this thing because it looks like it's huge and would require being in better shape than I probably am in order to go visit Machu Picchu. And there's just these sort of horizontal-ish lines that I was looking at in the photograph to try to mimic a little of the feel of this. And probably only those who know what Machu Picchu looks like would care about this. You could just do some random mountains. It wouldn't have to look like Machu Picchu because there's llamas in mountains all over the place. But this gives me a little bit of a flavor of what Machu Picchu might actually look like. So it was kind of fun to make a card with a very specific place in it. Decided to add a little flavor to my green by choosing a different green to layer in with my grasses. Give it a little bit more, I don't know, more interest instead of being just one solid type of green color. And then went back to the first green color so I could bring the grasses over the top of where all of those gray steps are. So it doesn't look like there's a gap in between there. So make some specific grassy lines that are gonna overlap that and then smooth out some of the areas down at the bottom that need a little bit of help there. But since it's grasses, you could actually leave a lot of those pencil lines and not really worry about it too much. It doesn't have to be all smooth and perfect. Because for the most part, I wanna to try to leave a lot of this color in the background duller and softer than my llama, so my llama stands out. And if you start getting too carried away with your background, you can always add more pencil, more layers to the front layer to that, that llama and give him a little more contrast if he's not popping out from the background far enough. 
So there we go. I did add a little bit more shadows and a little bit of blue touches to the mountain because I just couldn't stop once I got started. But I thought this is a really fun card. I love the spelling of lovely. There's also another sentiment in the set that says love ya. It has two L's in it. You can subscribe to my channel, get more videos from me by clicking on my face. There's a couple more videos you can watch. And I will see you guys later. If you need any of the supplies that are used in this video, you can click on the links in the doobly-doo below or over to my blog to pin some images. And I'll see you later. Bye-bye.